I'm going to give you all a copy of the instructive assessment the Bible used for all of your speeches, starting with speech one. Obviously, I didn't do it with your partner introduction, which is not a real speech. But I will do it for all of your speeches, starting with speech one, which begins this Thursday and ends this Friday or maybe early next week. Now, when you get this, you'll see that at the top it has a space for me to put whether it's graded or not. It has a place for the class hour, for your name, for your topic, and for the kind of speech that you're given. I'll go ahead and show it up here. There are one, two, three, four levels of performance on the rubric, starting with the least capable and going to the most capable. So I'm not going to bother talking about the absent or insufficient column. I'm assuming that all of you want to do the best that you can in all of your speeches. And that is represented by this column, which says exemplary. What does exemplary mean? Great. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, it comes from, you know what an exemplar is? Amber, what's an exemplar? Um, it's, uh, it, it's one that everybody makes that's really good. Yeah, it's, uh, an exemplar is a prime example. So an exemplar of a, well, for instance, believe it or not, Ronald Reagan, when he was a student at the University of Southern California, was chosen by his fellow students as the ideal male figure. Because he was athletic, tall, and muscular. They did a statue of him when he was at the University of Southern California. So he was an exemplar of a male figure. What I would like you to do is have exemplary speeches. Thus, I'm going to ask you now to, on your sheet, with either a pen or a highlighter, to draw a rectangle around this whole column that says exemplary. So that later on in the quarter, Anytime you're wondering, why didn't I do so well in the last speech as I thought I should have? Or, how can I further improve the greatness of my speeches? You can look back at this page and remind yourselves of exactly what it is that constitutes an outstanding speech. You all got that. All right, now, you'll see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six rows, which are the six components of the rubric and the six components of speeches that I will be looking for in everything you do this quarter. I'm going to go through these one at a time so that you'll know, again, what it is that makes an outstanding speech. I should point out, I think you may already know that the speeches can earn you up to 100 points each. There's no reason why you shouldn't do well on these once you know what it is that's required to do so. In fact, what I would love to have happen is that all of you make 100 points on all of your speeches. As it turns out, I have assessed about 12,000 speeches since I came to Clover Park Technical College. And before that, actually there have been no 100 points speeches here at Clover Park. There have been several 99s. There was one 100-point speech at Wenatchee Valley College in 2001. So it is possible to have a 100-point speech. I would like you to be the next people to earn 100 points on your speeches. You looked concerned, Erica. <laughs> no. You can be the next. All right. So let's start out with quality of preparation. If you look over here, what you'll see is a representation of what a speech is. I call it an iceberg. By this I mean that the part of the speech that your audience hears and sees is really only about 10% of the speech. The part that makes the speech good, makes it possible, is the part below the waterline, which is the preparation, which means thinking, reading, writing, talking, and practicing. I'll go into those things with time, especially since they don't all apply to speech number one. But what I'd like you to remember above all here is that when you see something happening and hear something happening in a speech, if it's good, it's not good <coughs> just because the person is capable of making a good speech at that time. It's because the person has prepared for it. In fact, when I 
write a public speaking textbook someday. The title of my book is going to be Speaking with Your Whole Life. In reality, anything we do is with our whole lives, isn't it? I mean, it's based on everything, every experience we have ever, ever had, every person we've ever met, every mistake we've ever, ever made, every achievement we've ever accomplished. All those things go into what we are at a, at a given moment. So, preparation is really, really important. It only counts for 15 points out of your 100, but it's really about 90% of the value. If this isn't there, then the rest of this is apt to be weak. So, what are the parts or the components of preparation? You'll see that it has two parts. It has duration and outline, and it has information literacy. The duration and outline apply to all the speeches, whereas the information literacy part uh, applies only to speeches two through seven. So I'm just going to talk about this part. In order to get your 10 points for duration and outline, your duration has to be within the assigned boundaries, plus or minus 30 seconds. For speech one, it's a two to four minute speech. It has to be at least two minutes long, but it may be as long as four and a half minutes. For all of your speeches, even if it's called five to seven, it can be seven and a half. If it's seven to 10, it can be 10 and a half. For the speeches other than the first one, it can also be 30 seconds less. So a five to seven minute speech can actually be four minutes, 30 seconds. Questions thus far? Is there going to be a clock so we can see how long we're on? You will have a clock, yes. That we, so can, that we can see? That you can see. Okay. Wednesday, I'm going to go over the details. Just as a preview, however, <laughs> this is the device that we'll be using in the class. Like a, stop, like a stoplight. So yes, one of you will be operating this <coughs> for each of the speeches. So you will know. OK, now. You should know with some degree of accuracy before you give the speech, before you get here, how long your speech is going to be, because you should have been practicing it. It shouldn't be a total surprise. It's possible that when you're a beginning speaker, you'll come up here and forget some of the things that you plan to say. <coughs> That's not uncommon, which is one reason for preparing with lots more material than you think you're going to need. It's also possible that you will become loquacious. You all know what loquacious means? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Talkative? Okay, so you might actually see yourself going longer than you intended. But the more you practice, the less likely that is. So the duration has to be within 30 seconds, and you need to submit a typed outline with all of your speeches. It says here that it needs to follow the required format and be submitted at the time of the speech. The required format is something that you'll find on Angel. It's also available in hard copy form. Looks like this. Every speech you give in this class, and I dare say I hope every speech you ever give anywhere, should follow something very, well, in the class it should follow exactly <coughs> this format. Now, when you go to the Museum of Modern Art in New York or the, or the Met or a large art museum that's famous, you'll see people, students there who are learning about other artists. You'll see that they are copying some of the things that the famous artists have done. That's because in order to become a great artist, you need to know what the great people of the past have done. Thus, I'm expecting you to use this form for this class. That doesn't mean that when you become Speaker of the House of Representatives or President of the United States or uh, CEO of a major corporation that you have to do that anymore. By that time, you'll be so skillful and confident as public speakers that that won't be necessary. But for this class, every <coughs> speech you use should use this form. So that is quality of preparation. The second component here is extras. Extras means things other than your body, your voice, and the furniture that you have around you when you speak. So extras can be visual, they can be auditory, they can be tactile, something that people feel, they can be things that people smell, they can be, but they have to be something in addition to yourself, extras. 
in order for you to get five points for your, and let me say again, I don't know if this is the case for every public speaking instructor in every public speaking course in the country, but as far as I'm concerned, any speech you ever give in your lives, in addition to following this format, needs to have an extra. Lisa has been kind enough this morning to work on a little project for the meeting that will be taking place in Olympia Wednesday morning when I'm going to be talking about the Open Course Library to the House Higher Education Committee. I'm not just going to talk to them. I'm going to have a PowerPoint because I expect a PowerPoint. But in addition to that, I'm going to have, would you hold up one of those items please? I'm going to get each member of the committee a little glass globule which has, you can pass that around if you'd like, which has the name of a course on the underside of it so that the people can actually hold it in their hands. Part of your task in a speech is to make sure that what you say doesn't just pass into the ether and disappear forever. Part of your task as a speaker is to make sure that what you say reverberates and remains in the minds of your audience so that something is different about them at the end of the speech and stays different. Your extras can go a long way toward that. Okay, you may turn that off. 